welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the Crusader 5.5 SP. It's the Tier 7 British SPG. This one's located on the Westbourne of Airfield and it's under the command of Oxidor of Olymp. And would you believe it, he's actually online streaming at this very moment as well as me um, doing his videos. Wow, that's multitasking for you. Well, well, he's not actually involved in the video other than actually driving this Crusader. And he has got the 5.5 inch gun, which is the top gun. How do I know that? Because the stock gun is actually a little one. It's a uh, tiny 4.5 inch howitzer, the same as on the Burt. This is the big 5.5 inch capable of 550 alpha and it will penetrate through 35 millimeters of armor with uh, 6.8 meters burst radius and 12 to 22 seconds stun duration. We're still waiting for enemy to turn up and he's aiming at Temple Mount where he thinks the first enemy is likely to be spotted. Unfortunately, none of our guys have gone up that direction, but we do have somebody in the pocket already, a Super Hellcat, and he might actually spot somebody uh, that we can shoot at. Now the standard reload time is 27 seconds and uh, in fact actually it's 27.8 and oxidor has got a reload time of 22.78. First target is going to be a T3485M. He's waiting for him to break the red line. Unfortunately he didn't break the red line before oxidor fired and the shell went straight past his turret. So his life would have flashed before him at that moment thinking oh my god. Yes, would have been quite um, surprising. You see that shell flash past you. Okay, AMX CDC rounds out. Direct hit! Thin armor on that uh, medium tank, which actually is a tank destroyer, not a medium tank, but in the game it's a medium. It was designed as a TD. Very thin armor, so it can move fast. Okay, he's going back to the T-3485M. Now, you see that green line running up to the reticule point? Now, if it breaks that red line, that green line rather, then obviously he's, he's gone through the track of the shell, but Oxidor fired a bit prematurely again, and it missed the target. Now, the good thing about the top gun is it will fire over most of the range of the battlefield, but the stock gun won't. It actually is um, fairly short range, in fact, actually, it's the same range as on the Burt. But the good th news about that is that uh, you can get a much faster fire rate with the 4.5 inch than you can with the top gun. The standard reload time for the stock gun is only 11.51 seconds. And you can probably get that below 10 seconds per shot. Okay, looks like the Viz 44 once about to receive a nasty shell. Yep. Direct hit for 188. Now, the Crusader actually didn't exist as an RT. It was one of the things they proposed to do, to take a standard Crusader medium tank, and then, well, it was a medium tank back then, and actually fit an artillery piece on top, take off the turret, and uh, move the engine about, so that it could actually be um, uh, used as an artillery piece. But... It never actually got put into production. Now, two tanks moving together like that. He could have hit the Crusader and taken him out of the game, but I think he's guessing where he is. Yeah, he did guess. Unfortunately for him, it didn't work out. The Crusader backed through that fence, and you can see he's doing some damage as he's knocking fences down. And the Shrek's changing position as well. You can see where the, Cru the, the Challenger, rather, has gone. It's, oh, and he's gone out the game altogether. He left it a little too late move out the way. Now we're two up on the enemy at the moment, so we are doing rather well. Having a look in that area again. The Shrek might still be there, but he may have changed position. So the Crusader 5.5 inch SP never actually got put into production. It could have been, but they didn't do it. I think they were quite happy with the uh, sextants they had at the time. After the war, of course, they came across uh, various different uh, versions of SPG that they wanted to put into action, and eventually they settled on 
the uh, abbot after the uh, after the sextons because they have plenty of sextons made in Canada and uh, so they kept on using those for quite some time okay that MX CDC has come back to the Temple Mount he's just moving about trying to spot where our guys might be might be able to get a shot on him oh close very close you can usually work out where they're headed if they go down into that little dip they're trying to make up their mind if they're going to go to the south or if they're actually going to turn around and come back again we've got an m6 up there who might be able to spot for us we're now three up on the enemy so it's a good game but not a lot of damage so far for oxidor not, not the sort of mount he normally gets oh amx cdc rounds out Oh, that was so close. It kind of dropped and yeah, we didn't get it. Okay, he's come back again. Ah, oh, no, so he is focusing on our M6. He's a tier eight and the M6 is tier six. So he's probably thinking I can get the, uh, the uh, tier six tank. Now I expect him to come somewhere around this region. He'll pop up again and try and get shots in the M6. Still three up on the enemy. Of course, if they can get rid of our M6, it will make it much easier for them to move around our guys to the south and sort of outflank our main force, which is in the north. They've all disappeared for the moment. We do have Viz 44-1 in the pocket, so he can look for us to see if anyone's there. But he can't see anyone at the moment. There's the CDC. He's come back in, and he's right next door to the amphitheater. He's trying to sneak up there, and he just took a round from the Viz 44-1, and he's backing away to get into cover. Which means he might try to come up here. Okay, so we're settling on this area, hoping that he's going to pop up. See if he can get a shot on the M6, who's still there. Unfortunately, we've lost a couple of tanks. We lost the SMV CC 56 and the Super Hellcat. So the enemy are doing well. Oh, oh, here we go. Rounds out. That's better. Thin armor on the AMX CDC allowed that shell to penetrate him, and so he's got his first kill. Okay, he's now looking around to see if he can see that Shrek. Can't see anything there. Can't see anything on the um, the normal tank destroyer spot up on that hill. He's looking in the corner, hoping that he might be able to get one of the RT over there. There's only one RT left on the enemy team. It's a Lorraine 15550. Okay, we found the ARL 44. We can definitely do something about him. We're fully dialed in. Red on, rounds out and... Yes, he got a hit on the rear of the vehicle. 161, all adds up. He's over a thousand hit points of damage so far. No stun assist though. But you don't get much stun assist because the, the actual caliber of the gun is um, 139.7. Now, technically speaking, you're not supposed to have stun off anything below 15 centimeter, but it does actually have stun, this, these shells. Long range shot. Oh, yes, it hit the tracks, I think, of the T25 AT. He just caught the tracks on him. We're two up on the enemy again. Okay, nearest enemy is the ARL 44. He's just too close for us to get a shot on him here, but if he comes around that corner. We might be able to slot one through the gap. And he takes out the Viz 44-1. But now, will he move forward? And I think he is trying to move forward. Rounds out. Nice shot. 
Good shot, and a kill shot came afterwards. It was taken out by our Viz 44 one from the pocket, but the Indian Panzer saw that. And unfortunately, it meant that their Shrek managed to get a shot on him from the, over on the Temple Mount. There he is. Now, he's got thin armor as well, and we're almost loaded. Here we go. Rounds out. And a big hit on him, but unfortunately, he takes out our teammate. Well, no, it wasn't him. It was the T25AT took out the Basotto before he attacked or got the Shrek. The Shrek's just met the M6, who looked as if he was going in for the ram kill, but the Shrek took him out. Or was it? No, it was the T25AT again. But there goes the Shrek. 320 thin armor on the side of the vehicle took the round. And now that means there's only three left on our team, but there's four on the enemy team. So they do have the advantage. We've got two RTs. They've got only one. And of course, this vehicle drives better backwards or faster backwards than it does forwards. Now, our P43 has gone up right up the other end of the map to their cap area. And I think that what Oxidor is doing at the moment is trying to get position so they can assist the uh, P43. He's thinking about going down the dip. Yep, you can do that. Slide down. He might be worried about that Indian Panzer, but if he keeps moving quickly enough, and this vehicle does move uh, in reverse at 43.5, the Indian Panzer did see him. So he's coming this way. And the enemy RT will try to nail him. Oh, it looks like somebody hit him. The Indian Panzer just took a round from the SU-8. And another round hits the Indian Panzer. But yeah, here comes the Lorraine 15550. We're camping at the other end. And we're almost ready. We've locked onto the Indian Panzer for a, a shotgun. The moment he comes into view. And we're still waiting for the reload to go through. This is getting very exciting. We're using the rock to cover. We got tracked, so he had to burn his repair kit. But here we go. Yes, shotgun at close range. That one works really well. Yeah, you don't try to attack one of these from its rear. I took out an enemy tank that was chasing me while I was driving one of these. And I did it while I was on the move. I think he must have been really surprised, but we've lost our P-43 biz. And now the enemy tanks are coming towards us. We're aiming for the T25 AT. Rouse out. Oh, it's a kill shot on the move. He aimed it and led the target and fired the round in and killed the T25 AT as he moved through the track. And now that means that we're even on numbers. There's only two RT left on our team, though. And the enemy team has got that. Uh, Jackson and their Lorraine 15550. Now he's sitting in ambush, hoping he might be able to spot the enemy. He's got 275 meters view range. There's the enemy RT. And he gets the kill on him too. Two minutes to go. That Lorraine didn't know what hit him. He must have realized he'd been spotted. His sixth sense must have gone off. But he just didn't know where we were. And Oxidor was in a perfect position to ambush him. Now, will his 275 meter view range enable him? Yes, it does enable him to see the Jackson coming into view. He's going for it. Oh, a lovely hit for 239. It doesn't kill him, though, but he didn't get spotted. Now, will he be able to reload in time? He can't see the Jackson, but he must be behind that rock, surely. Okay, we're almost loaded. Yes. Okay, so we've got a shell. He must be behind that rock, surely. The SU waits come to, to uh, get a bit closer to the enemy, see if he can spot him. If he's still sitting behind that rock, we've only got one round of premium HE left with no stun. And the Jackson did manage to get round the corner and he just took out our SU-8. But we're aiming directly towards him. Oh, it missed. And well, that's the last of the premium HE, but he's still got 10 rounds of ordinary HE. And he's trying to get to a position. So he's got something between him 
and the enemy. The enemy can't cap. He hasn't got enough time. He has to go for the kill. Capping won't make a difference. Now he's setting himself up to take out the Jackson. The moment he goes through that building, Jackson's trying to knock the building down, which was bad news because he's on reload and he took a round. Now he's got to move and get out of here quick because he's reloading and the Jackson, well, he's stunned, which means that he's um, unable to turn his turret properly. And Oxidor can win this game. Oh, it's a draw. Well, that one went right down to the wire and I wasn't watching the clock as it was going down. But Oxidor had every chance of taking out that Jackson with his last round. Unfortunately, the round that he fired in uh, didn't do enough damage. Uh, um, the Jackson fired prematurely to knock down the building, hoping that then he'd be able to shoot uh, Oxidor the moment that he went through the building. But that was a bit of a mistake because then he's got that long reload for his 19mm gun. And when he actually fired at the building, it meant that Oxidor knew that he can move forward and shoot the guy right in the face uh, by just driving straight through the building. And Jackson just couldn't return fire because he was still in reload. And by doing that, he slowed him down enough with stun that he could turn around and get behind the Jackson and try and shoot him in the rear. But of course, he was probably looking at the clock as well. Uh, or may have been looking at the clock, but he might have been able to reload and get another round into the rear of the Jackson to win the game. But sadly, the clock ticked out before he could do it. So sadly, it was a draw in the end, but it was an exciting battle right down to the last second. That was an ace tanker game for Oxidor in the Crusader SP. He managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got five one third of the enemy team and just one tank short of getting a top gun. If he killed the Jackson, he would have got a top gun as well. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he managed to get 18. And he also got a gauze medal for doing more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points for his own vehicle, as well as a high caliber for dealing the most damage in that game overall. He had some epic shots in that game as well. 9,856 was the win eight. A very, very high score indeed. Let's have a look at the team score and see where he was. Well, we can see straight away 3,087 hit points. Nobody got over 3,000 but Oxidor. The next highest being the Jackson he was up against who got 2,038. And the third highest damage went to their Lorraine 15550 who made a cataclysmically bad error to cut across the other side of Temple Mount in full view of Oxidor. Uh, so Oxidor could take him out with one clean round. 1,862 to him, and he got a confederate in that game as well. The T25 AT on their team got a defender by resetting the P43 biz while he was capping. When it came to kills, yep, Oxidor got that one as well. Five kills for him, four kills for the T25 AT, and then two kills for a number of tanks in this. You can see them down here. And when it came to base XP... Yep, he got the highest on that one. So topping all three columns, 822 went to Oxidor, 491, oh, 576, sorry, to the AMX CDC, the one he hit in the side, 555 went to the T25AT. He fired 23 rounds in that game, got 13 direct hits on the enemy and four penetrations. You only get 32 rounds ammo, so he still had plenty of ammo left, but uh, he'd run out of all the premium HE and uh, was just using the standard HE instead at that particular point. Um, splash on that, uh, on the, from that, those shots was 13 as well. 3,087 hit points of damage of which 2,063 were more than 300 meters. The penetrated shots, by the way, just go through them again. The Lorraine went straight through the side of him, no problem with that. Um, didn't penetrate the Jackson, but did 360 hit points of damage, to, uh, 350, sorry. So left him on virtually no hit points at all. Um, he then penetrated the Shrek, uh, 490, when he killed that guy. And he got uh, two penetrations, would you believe it, on the AMX CDC. Uh, so his first shot, the one that um, went in the first one, uh, first time round, did um, a penetrator. And the last one, right into the side, went straight through his weak armour. Let's go back to the details. He spotted one enemy vehicle. That would have been the Lorraine. Nine enemy vehicles damage, five killed, and 153 hit points of damage assist, and 327 hit points of stun assist off 10 stuns. 
He earned 40,827 credits on a premium count, 5,040 for Courageous Resistance, that's because he got an Epic or Battle Hero medal, in fact he, he got one of each, uh, in a losing or drawn game, this was a draw, 45,867 credits altogether, and after Ammunition, Resupply and Consumables took away a profit of 19,467 credits. 1,233 XP, 720 for Courageous Resistance, 1,953 experience points altogether. Let's have a quick look at the uh, armor profile. Yeah, it's a Crusader tank. Uh, I know the Crusader is now technically a light tank, but back in the Second World War, it was supposed to be a cruiser tank. Uh, that's the difference. Uh, cruiser tanks were supposed to run close and close with the enemy at fast speed, uh, firing at them as they went. Uh, they weren't particularly light tanks, but they were armed and with a big enough gun that they could do enough damage to put down or stop the firing from enemy tanks in the distance. You can see the armor's pretty um, strong at the front. It's 28.3. But remember, this is actually the rear of the vehicle because this thing drives backwards. So this is what would normally be the, um, the rear of a Crusader with the engine at the back the gun being placed where the turret would normally be, but moves slightly further forward because, of course, it's an extremely heavy vehicle and uh, therefore you want to counterbalance the engine with the weight of the howitzer. OK, if we look at the uh, live model. OK, if you look at the live model, anything that touches this is just going to go straight through. No problem whatsoever. If we look at the uh, modules. Oh, didn't mean for that to happen. So we'll do that. And now we'll do this. That's better. OK, right, you can see uh, transmission is at where the, um, the rear of the vehicle would be normally. Uh, of course, this is the front of the vehicle as we're looking at it because it drives backwards. We've got the engine sandwiched between two fuel tanks. It, we've got the driver facing the opposite way because, of course, whilst he's driving, he's driving backwards. And um, we can see the Amorak's actually in the floor of the vehicle underneath the howitzer. We've got the tank commander sitting uh, on the other side from the driver. And the gun layer is actually right next door to the base of the howitzer with the two loaders operating the, uh, taking the shells out of the Amorak, putting them into the breach. So that's where all the modules are on the Crusader 5.5. Now, Oxidor has rather kindly sent in two replays featuring the Crusader SP. So I thought, yes, we'll do a double feature on this one. So let's have a look at the second battle. The second battle is on the outpost map. And again, we can see that three marked barrel. Game underway. Yes, this RT can be quite exciting to play when you're being chased by an enemy tank and you're shooting at them whilst you're on the go. It, it does help if you can auto aim onto the enemy tanks, you stand a much better chance of hitting them. Um, but it also can be trying a bit of a trial, try to fire this thing when you're uh, you have to get your controls reverse you have to think in reverse all the time to uh, work out how you're going to drive to a particular object uh, or direction because um, normally you would drive straight forward but now if you drive forward on this thing you're actually going in reverse it's top speed in reverse it's only 14 kilometers now so very very slow but in standard mode going in reverse going I mean the correct way it's 48.5 First shot goes to the 45 TP, 218 hit points. You can see that guy's got a bit of stun. Now he's got a chance of getting two tanks here if we can uh, lay the shell in the right position. If they consent and stay together. Okay, we're loaded. Oh, look at that. We got more than one tank spotted. And he stunned all three of them there. This is where you need to press the T key to let your teammates know that's the tank I want you to hit. Enemy RT in this game is an M12, so he hasn't got as many rounds as you. You've got 32, he's only got uh, 20. Rounds out. Oh, he was lucky there. The shell actually went to the right and intercepted the 45 TP and the IS-6B with most of the damage going to the 6B. And the Besantes decided not to move. Or at least he is now moving, but unfortunately our guys are not spotting him anymore. That's not so good, but look at this. We've got an SMV CC56 and we can hit him in the side. Rounds out. 
right into the side. Look at that, 194. And he gets the kill. So the stun assist goes to him as well. He doesn't get the kill, me, but I actually got the kill assist on that one by stunning the guy and tracking him at the right moment. Okay, which one do you go for? The turtle or the bisonte? Bisonte would be better. Oh, another big hit on the side. 205. Yeah, Bisonte's backing off now. He doesn't like it. He's obviously a bit worried that if he stays up front, he's going to get another RT shell. If I was face out two tanks like this, I'd go for the 6B rather than the Turtle, but Oxidor's decided to go for the Turtle and didn't get any damage at all because it's got fairly thick armor. The 6B actually has got slightly less armor. He's pumping those shells out as quickly as he can. Rounds out again. This time round, he lands it alongside the vehicle. He didn't mean to do that, but actually hitting the side meant that he splashed him on the side. The IS-6B has decided to move a lot way forward. He's obviously got more uh, motivation to do so. We're still focusing on the turtle. Rounds out. Okay, another 71 hit points and he's still stunning him. Now might be a good time to switch to the premium HG to try and do more damage to him. The 6B's gone through the gap, so we can't get him at the moment. But we can see the Bisonte again. He's come back. And that may be a mistake by him. Well, he got stunned. But he's back into cover. No, he's come back out again. He was thinking about going for the Basante, but then changed his mind. Now, where did that IS-6B go? It looks like he went for one of the, the gaps, trying to shoot at our guys to the north. And in the meantime, we found a comet. He's between the buildings. We can't really get a shot on him, but we can certainly hit this guy because he just hit our SMV CC 56 and took him out. And he's gone for the sides of that, that hill. Rounds out. Right into his side, 214. That was a good hit. Unfortunately, our guys having to pull back bit by bit. But that's going to make it easier. As, as they pull back, it's going to draw the SMV CC 67 and the others in uh, to our killing zone. And then we can take them out. Almost loaded. Rounds out again. Oh, right past the rear of him. See rounds bouncing off. Remember, heavy armor on the front of that vehicle. A bit of shots. He's loaded. Fires in. Again, zips past the side. Well, the I-6B just went down. We're only one down on the enemy, so there's still everything to uh, to live for. Panther M10. Yep, thin armor on those, so they do take damage. He's packed up right against the wall at the end. Can't get a shot on that super hellcat. He'd need to move to the south, I think, if he was going to get shots on some of those guys in that area. But if he did move in that direction, he'd make himself fairly vulnerable. Going for the Bisonte. He can do this. Rounds out. Yes, he got him. Splashed him to death. That Panther M10's pulled back because he didn't like it, but he's been drawn forward to the gap because he knows that he can probably get his gun depressed down onto the target on some of those tanks. Yeah, you can see it's drawing him in. He knows that there's artillery, but he keeps wanting to try and get at our guys. And that was an artillery round firing in our direction, I think. Rounds out. Oh, we got a blind hit. The Panther M10 took that one. 
He knew that he was going for the gap and he clicked, he correctly aimed for that gap. I could see the, the thing going through almost in my mind. He aimed it correctly and got a direct hit. So that pad for M10 is probably down to his last few hit points now. Now we do worry about the enemy uh, tank destroyers that are coming from the other direction and that uh, comet because we can't really get a shot on them from here because of that hill. So he needs to change position. Good, this will work. So if he gets far enough over, he can shoot down the gap, but he doesn't want to be too far over because he doesn't want to get spotted by that 45 TP. Okay, the E25 is actually directly in his field of fire as well, which isn't helpful, but we'll know if we're within the direct line. Go for it. Take him. Yes, good hit. He's got behind the AT-15, but our E-25 is pumping the rounds in now. We're not going to be loaded in time. The Comet gets behind cover, but we've still got the SMBCC. Go and take him. Almost loaded. Rounds out. Ooh, right over the top of him again. The Comet's only got three hit points. One shot would be enough to finish him off. RT firing again in our direction. I think he's actually aiming for the E25. But Oxidor can kill the Comet with one round. He only needs to aim for the side of the building. He's almost loaded. Yes! Nice one. Okay, we're changing because we're going to the 45 TPs, trying to creep up on our guys from behind. And we're telling the 40, uh, the Samur that, yes, we're trying to help him from the other direction. We're not loaded yet, but the um, Samur went down. But that was a good hit. Really good hit onto the side. The scores are still even. Oxidor's managed to get two kills out of this. He's changing position just slightly. I think he's hoping he might be able to get that 45 TPs coming up from that direction. Now, can he? Yes, he can. And that guy's got no damage whatsoever yet. So he really hasn't taken part in the battle. He may be a bit of a novice. Going for the top of the vehicle. Didn't work. He's focusing on that SMBCC and the 45 TP for the moment. Now he can just about get his gun up to shoot at these guys. But he's almost certainly going to get a shot into the side of that one. Oh, it's a kill shot! Another good one. That's three kills now for Oxidor. Right into the side. He just needs to get into an angle so he can actually shoot that way. It's right up against the edge of the cliff. They haven't actually given us much room to work with. If, if we move too far away to the uh, to our uh, to the south, to a bit further to the to our left, we might actually enable the enemy 45 TP to get a shot on us. So we don't really want to go too far away. The E25 is holding the corner. He's almost acting as our spotter. Meanwhile, our other teammates are actually making their way towards the enemy cap area. Now, with a bit of luck, they might get those guys to change course and actually go in that direction, and then we can get a shot. But in the meantime, he's seen two tanks he can hit. A T-34, tier 8 American heavy tank, and the E-25 dies, so he's gone. Oh, lovely direct hit again, 202. We can't see the 45 TP, so I get the feeling... Oh, he is still there! Now, he's changing position again. Now, I have the feeling he's now going to wait for this guy to come out the gap. This could be a mistake because he doesn't want to let that guy see exactly where he is. There's still an enemy arty in the game. He's popping up just to have a quick look. 275 meter view range, remember? The 45 TP will have much better than that. E25 is getting into a position where he might be able to spot the 45 TP. Here he comes. Unfortunately, we can't get the shell over the top of this mound. It's just too close. The E25 is trying to harass the 45 TP. 
He knows where we are. The 45 TP must realize where we are. And we can just outrun him. Now might be the time to abandon this area and move south quickly as we can to get into the low ground over there. He's saying to the SU that he wants his help. The E25 is doing everything he can to distract the 45 TP. Now we're using the premium HE round for more damage. The E25 just took a big hit. Now he's pulling the gun up. Puts one right up the tailpipe of the 45 TP. 259 hit points did all he could. I think the E25 is, get, is pummeling those rounds into him. He might get him. Yes, he does. Now that means there's only one enemy left. We know where he is. We're dialing in. Okay, he's telling the T-34-100 that we're going to support. We'll put the round in. Round's out. Long range. No, it didn't work. He needs to reload. I would have marked it as my target and then let the other guys say no. But look at that. He wants the ram kill. And he gets it. That was exciting. Well, that was an exciting battle for Oxidor and the Crusader SP and yet another ace tanker in the vehicle. And this battle took place about an hour after the last one as well. It's in fact slightly less than an hour. So he was having a good day in the Crusader. He also got another Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 15 and he got another Gauss medal for doing more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points of his own vehicle and a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. His winning from that battle, 7,552. So that's super unicum and a bit more. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game. The SMB CC67 on the enemy team picked up the high caliber for 4,446 hit points. But he wasn't far behind because, uh, well, get that back. Okay, he managed to get 3,242 hit points of damage. Uh, and, of course, the Gauss Medal and the Confederate. And the third highest damage in the game turned out to be the SU-130PM with 2,587, with the Yak Tiger getting a Steel Wall and their Comet getting a Leather Slayer's Medal. When it came to kills, he actually had jointly holding the top score because he managed to get three kills, so did the SU-130PM and the Yak Tiger all got three apiece. Two kills went to the E25 on his team and the T-34-100 and three members of the enemy team, their SMB CC-67, their Turtle and their Comet. When it came to base XP, it was the Samur who did the best. He got 1,207, the Crusader managed 1,135 and uh, um, Oxidor got 1,135 and the third highest was the Ag Tiger with 1,080 and those were the only three players who managed to get over 1,000 base in the game he fired 24 shots so he still had eight rounds left at the end of the game 16 direct hits on the enemy no penetrations though 28 splash i think if he'd hit that m12 right at the end of the game that would have been his only penetrating shot if it landed on target he did 3242 hit points of damage but he uh, did 2,980 of that at long range. The short range shot was the one into the 45 TP where he drove up over the ridge line and fired a premium HE round into the rear of him. And that was good because it didn't actually interfere with the E25. He didn't get stunned by that shell, which enabled him to keep pumping those rounds into the 45 TP and finally get the kill. He damaged 10 of the enemy, killed three. So there was a seven difference. That's where he got the Confederate from. 248 hit points of stun assist off 21 stun, so not much in the way of stun assist on this game uh, because his teammates weren't actually shooting at the targets he was firing at, uh, quite unlike in the previous battle where they were actually shooting at some of the targets. 43,023 credits on a premium count after ammunition resupply and consumables. He still came away with a profit of 16,023 credits for the game. 1,702 XP and no multipliers, so that's all the experience points he took away. But two great games. I think the, fir the first one where he was almost about to win and shoot the Jackson in the rear to take the battle, and it was snatched away from him by the clock running out. 
Uh, so very unlucky that he couldn't take that one. He did exactly the right thing to drive through those walls after the Jackson shot at the walls because it was a big mistake by the Jackson. He shouldn't have done that. He should have let his vehicle shoot through the uh, walls or crash through the walls and then shoot at point blank range into uh, Oxidor. But he didn't do that. And that gave Oxidor the chance to drive through the walls and shoot him in the face with that howitzer. It's just unfortunate that it didn't kill the enemy tank. And so, uh, yes, he ended up uh, uh, in a position where he had to get around the back of the guy to shoot him again because otherwise he would have reloaded and shot Oxidor uh, and killed him straight off. But yes, very exciting on the uh, first game. Uh, almost as exciting on the second one as well. Uh, it just goes to show that he, there's a reason why he had three marks of excellence on the barrel of his howitzer. It's because he's damn good. He really does know his stuff. And he plays these uh, RT really, really well. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did, please give these videos a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.